Time for our next speaker. I have the privilege of introducing to you uh, Professor Huff. He is uh, working at UALR with the cybersecurity. They have a nice um, new curriculum. If you're teaching uh, CS and you're looking for some cybersecurity cyber security curriculum, he's a great resource for you along for your students. They have uh, some really interesting programs that they're doing at UAL UALR, so I'd like to give him the stand so he could tell you about that. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah, and I really, um, I'm going to talk about some of the things we're doing at UA Little Rock, but I really want to talk about uh, what's going on in cybersecurity within the state of Arkansas. I think there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of assets that we have as a state, and we're all responsible for building this pipeline together. So I want to talk uh, more about uh, that and what we can all do uh, together to prepare uh, the students for opportunities in cybersecurity. Um, I want to start out with talking about what cybersecurity is, because when I tell people I teach cybersecurity, that I work in cybersecurity, I get uh, one of two responses. Uh, it usually has to do with uh, passwords. They talk about the strength of their passwords. Some of them may even share their password with me. And uh, it, it is just one of those things that we as a professional community have managed to uh, find the single most annoying thing in most people's lives and uh, just torture them with that. But passwords have been something that people think of when they think of cybersecurity. Uh, the other thing uh, that they talk to me about is just how, um, how important it is, how important cybersecurity is. And what they mean by that is that they feel very vulnerable. If you, if you watch the news, if you see what's going on, uh, whether it's our elections, whether it's letters they've re received in the mail about credit card fraud that's happened recently, people feel extremely uh, vulnerable that companies don't, the government companies do not have uh, their uh, security um, at heart. They aren't doing enough about it. And so they think it's an important thing, but they really don't know what it is. Uh, and so for us, it's important to, to teach students what they're getting into. When, they, when we talk about cybersecurity, what is it that they're getting into? Um, and a lot of students come to cybersecurity with a love for technology. Uh, they're interested, uh, perhaps from gaming or from all of the things that we see on this floor around here. Uh, it, it is a, a really cool thing. Uh, they come to it from just the um, uh, thinking that they may get to hack things, and that's a very fun thing as well. But cybersecurity as a discipline, is, it, it, is a, it addresses a societal problem, and it involves a lot more than just the technology. It is probably one of the largest in terms of breadth and depth of, um, of subjects to understand. Uh, most of the cyber attacks that, that successfully take place have nothing to do with the technology, they have to do with the people and the way they interact with, with the technology. Uh, so the study of sociology, the study of psychology, of adversarial thinking all, are all necessary to understand technology. If you just go in it loving technology, then you'll continue uh, creating professionals that torture people's lives with, uh, with password policies that are too strict. Um, it takes understanding how people respond and how uh, how people use the technology to understand how do cyber attacks, how are they prevented. Um, and that's what we need to target in terms of cybersecurity education. So what does that mean for us in uh, the natural state? What does that mean for the, uh, our students that are coming into this program? There is a tremendous um, potential over the next few years for the cybersecurity workforce. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology have estimated by the year 2022, uh, there will be over uh, 1.2 million job openings, and, and that's openings, that's not professionals, 1.2 million unfilled jobs within the United States. Um, and why that's important for us in Arkansas is those jobs are technology jobs that aren't just going to be focused in uh, California or the East Coast. But these are technology jobs that are regional because cybersecurity uh, requires you understanding the context of what is going on within the organization. You know, you contrast that with things like gaming, with things like robotics, where you have huge companies in New York, in, uh, in LA, um, all around the large, in Dallas, large, uh, large cities, um, 
that most of the professionals are hired there. If you want to work at Google or Apple, then the, the really cool engineering jobs are centralized in, in those large cities. But that's not the case with cybersecurity because cybersecurity is not something you can centralize as a service very well. It requires people understanding the context in which the cyber attacks happen. You think of a place like Walmart uh, or a place like um, Arkansas Electric, your local utilities, um, uh, Tyson Foods, your banks. They have to, they have to not only stand, understand what attacks are taking place and how to best protect the systems, they also have to understand what are the organizational processes that take place, where are those geographically located, I have to, how can I physically respond? And so cybersecurity, uh, these jobs are, are forming everywhere. That's what creates that three million. It's not just that we just need more people in cybersecurity. It's that every organization throughout Arkansas is developing a 24 by seven security operations center. And that's an expansion of job growth. It's not, uh, this is one of those rare areas in IT where you're not losing jobs uh, as, as, you have, if you, as you grow in technology, your cybersecurity uh, job growth is going to grow as well. The humans that you need uh, is going to grow because you need to fill those security operations centers. A single security operations center for Walmart could employ thousands uh, of, employ uh, of people in cybersecurity uh, regionally. Um, so that's why it's important for us to focus uh, on cybersecurity as a state and, and why I appreciate what the uh, um, uh, Department of Ed is doing here, what the governor's office uh, is doing, and what um, universities and schools are doing in, in teaching students uh, cybersecurity. So I want you to take a look at the asset map that we have in Arkansas. This was put together uh, by Lee Watson from the Forge Institute. And it goes through all of the, all of the things we have going for ourselves in, in this state, uh, not just around educational opportunities, job opportunities, but everything we have going to create a nexus where we could really find some big growth uh, for our students today in cybersecurity. If you look at um, from the private sector, uh, we may not have the huge global tech companies, but we have a lot of infrastructure running through here. About two thirds of the US power grid is controlled uh, from the state of Arkansas between uh, Southwest Power Pool and, uh, and MISO um, here, uh, here in the state of Arkansas. Uh, they, they monitor and control uh, two-thirds of the U.S. power grid. Uh, I don't have to mention, we have Walmart, Tyson Foods, huge production food companies here in the state, Riceland, um, that, are, that provide infrastructure. Uh, so we have a huge uh, section of, of the private sector um, that's doing a lot of really interesting things. The academic environment is incredible. Uh, we have um, folks that you see here today, we have degrees in cyber, uh, undergraduate four-year degrees in cybersecurity uh, through uh, UCA. You've seen the cyber range right in front of me right here. Um, our program at UA Little Rock, uh, up in Fayetteville, Arkansas Tech. Um, and this is not an area that we're competing in. If, if I go back to the slides, there's 1.2 million unfilled jobs this is not something that uh, we compete in. This is something that everybody needs to develop. If you look at what's going on in Maryland, they have a college park where they're all coordinating to get as many cybersecurity professionals out as possible. And that's a, the same type of coordination is happening uh, here in the state. Um, so a great uh, academic environment. UA Fayetteville is doing a lot of great research, uh, certificate degrees, graduate degrees as well. Uh, so throughout the state, we have a lot of good things going on academically. And then through our state agencies, the support that the governor has provided in computer science, STEM education, and also in cybersecurity education pays dividends in developing that pipeline. Um, and our, our federal partners as well are very interested. Department of Homeland Security is engaged, FBI is engaged, Secret Service. Uh, NSA is very interested because most of their assets exist within, um, within that small corridor in the Virginia DC area. And they are looking to expand out to establish more partnerships with, um, uh, with the private sector because that's where the next frontier of warfare is going, is directly targeting the private sector. We've seen it in other countries, and we'll see it here soon as well. So that partnership with the private sector means our federal agencies, our partners in, in, in those federal agencies, are very interested in what Arkansas has to provide uh, in terms of helping 
establish those partnerships with the critical infrastructure. And then also the community we have uh, around, um, around Arkansas. Uh, I don't see Eli McRae here, uh, but his Joel Tackathon is, is back on in, in August, I believe. Uh, just incredible things, incredible things going on within the state that make Arkansas a very, uh, have very strong potential uh, for the future of cybersecurity. And if you look at what's going on in, in, um, in the technology field as a whole, you can see that the job potential in cybersecurity is going to grow. We are, we are facing the cusp of uh, cellular 5G network, highly reliable, low latency communication across the state. We have a great fiber build out across the state, not fast enough for some of us, but that is, that is coming to our rural communities. Um, and then Amazon and, uh, and SpaceX are launching satellites to globally cover the, uh, the world in uh, highly available technology. And what that means is just an explosion of machine technology. Uh, and it's changing the way we're doing uh, computing and the way that we do cybersecurity. And so the, the need for professionals that understand how to protect these systems uh, is going to grow because it's not just about your data anymore. It's about your locks, it's about your lights, it's about your car, it's about your pacemaker, it's about everything, uh, the underlying fabric of society. Anything that has a chip and a cellular uh, Wi-Fi card in it, um, we, need, uh, we need to start thinking about that, thinking in terms of what, is this, what does that mean in the next few years uh, and how are we going to protect those as we manufacture them. And I, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on uh, within UA Little Rock, what we're doing um, within the Emerging Analytics Center, some of the research uh, we're doing. So one of the things I'm, I'm really excited about um, is our um, outreach to, um, to secondary education, to the middle schools, and uh, providing a, a work, workout environment. We call it the cyber gym, um, where students can go and work out their cyber skills all the way from the very beginner level to just gauging what interest they have in it uh, to, to where they can uh, start developing those skills and participating in the workforce. Um, our booth is at the back. I'll make a, a, a plug for our guys back there. They've done some incredible stuff over the summer. Um, but we've, um, we've developed an environment where students can learn online. It's an online open curriculum and, uh, and teachers can, can bring that into their classroom. Uh, and then we have a space where they can build up their own Google network environment within a few minutes. And this is incredible technology for somebody that's grown up in, uh, in the technology field where, uh, you know, when you wanted to have a lab environment, uh, when you wanted to, uh, to set up a system, you would go out about a year before, start the procurement and budget process, build your server, bring your server in, rack it up, uh, establish agreements with your software companies, and get Microsoft loaded, and then uh, start testing and, and putting that server into production. And it's really, it's really neat to see with the cloud technology, within a few minutes, um, within the click of a button, a few minutes, you have enterprise grade software and at an extremely cheap rate. And this is great for the learning environment um, that we can within, uh, within a few minutes and for uh, less than a cent, sometimes maybe up to five cents, uh, an hour, students can participate in labs where they can launch botnet attacks against themselves. They can launch denial of service attacks um, against themselves and learn how to protect them, all within the Google Cloud in an environment that's going to be destroyed in the next few seconds. Uh, so I've been really excited to see that technology. Uh, we've worked with UCA, I appreciate John Black uh, coming out as well. Um, they're doing incredible things uh, with their cyber range, uh, very advanced stuff. Uh, so. Um, that's something that we've partnered together, working together to uh, provide opportunities within uh, the state of Arkansas uh, for students to start learning at a very young age to uh, what it means, what cybersecurity means, and, it, and being able to interact with those skills. Um, another project we're working on, probably a, a one of our more successful cybersecurity pro uh, projects that are out in, uh, in Arkansas companies uh, right now, uh, we're working with vulnerability intelligence. Um, and uh, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence technologies, uh, where we're taking the data problem of cybersecurity and making it more accessible to where humans can actually stay ahead of the game. 
uh, that's a big problem right now because the, the deluge of, of data that they're getting is just far beyond what they can consume. Um, the typical security operations desk probably has 10 to 100 million logs per day that are coming through their systems. Um, the vulnerabilities, tens of thousands of vulnerabilities per month that they have to do something about. And I don't care how many people you have, it's not enough to take care of the problems that just uh, medium-sized organizations have uh, to deal with. So we have to, we have to leverage uh, uh, technology that we've, that's been developed through uh, machine learning and AI uh, to find better ways to automate uh, this problem. This is one that we've had a lot of success with, with the vulnerability uh, intelligence. And we've been partnering uh, heavily with the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, Dr. Lee and his research team up there. Um, uh, we're doing some great things uh, with that. That's an exciting project. Um, and also within the Emerging Analytics Center, this is, uh, they are, um, their core strength is in immersive visualization, different ways with, uh, in which humans can interact with computing. And this is very important for, uh, for cybersecurity because it's all about how much risk can a uh, human process in the shortest amount of time. And what we've found is a lot of technologies in security today are flat, they're Excel spreadsheets, they're log files that are scrolling through. There's not a lot of good visualization. And so we're looking at how can we improve that? How can we make more effective visualizations that help humans reduce the risk in a small amount of time? And another project we have that I want to highlight is in an industrial control systems. Uh, these are things that not only process data, but actuate things in re real life. Some of our most important critical infrastructure rely on these digital systems, and that the cyber threat and vulnerabilities are growing day by day. And so forensics is not just about going in and identifying um, hidden things on a computer, but also looking at if a cyber attack were to take place on a water system, on a natural gas process, on our electric system, power grid, um, how can we go in there and identify what happened and find ways to fix it uh, very quickly? So this is an area that um, uh, we're looking very much into, along with the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, uh, finding ways in which we can uh, protect society from the cybersecurity threats. So what does all, all this mean uh, to us? What's the big takeaway? Um, cybersecurity is not something that we can just... Um, uh, one year as a state decide, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in cybersecurity. I think we're going to flip this around and we're going to provide our students with opportunities right now. We're going to be a cybersecurity state. In the next year, we're going to be a cybersecurity state. It just it doesn't happen that way. It goes back to all of these partnerships, um, these assets that we have within the state that, that culminate to get our to build the workforce, what we need to do as a state is develop a workforce pipeline for tremendous opportunities we have for high-paying, regionally centralized jobs uh, that our our current uh, our current children today can take advantage of in the next five to ten years. Uh, this is something that we've gotten ahead of, I think, as a state. I think we lead the nation in a lot of things in the way we're approaching cybersecurity. So that five to 10 years out, we have, uh, starting at the middle school children, starting even at the elementary school children, starting engaging them uh, in technology and in a, di in a diverse workforce that we bring in. I have two girls in, in middle school and high school right now, and it is extremely challenging uh, in the environments that we, uh, that we show them in cybersecurity. It looks like there's a bunch of guys there. Um, that looks kind of like a chess team. I don't want to be a part of that. Uh, that's something that we need to tackle because we have just a brilliant students coming up through the programs and I, I'm, I'm selfish. I want all of them to be involved in cybersecurity in some way. Uh, and we need to interest them at the middle school level when those foundational interests are starting so that by the time they graduate high school, maybe looking for a profession, looking for what degree they want to tackle that we have an answer for them, we have interesting research problems, and we have immediate jobs in both the public and private sector uh, here within, within the state of Arkansas. That's something we, we need to do uh, as a community, and that, that's what I want to leave you with this morning. Thank you for your time.
Yes, uh, so the question is, are there op opportunities for undergraduates to work on the funded research projects? Um, absolutely, we have some undergraduates back there that are working on our funded research projects, and over here as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we have a lot of opportunities. More opportunities than we have students, so this is uh, um, a, a very big need for us and a very exciting, uh, exciting time for the students. Yes, thank you, Dr. Baker, for seeding that question. The question was, can a teacher in a, in a high school let them know that this is a place uh, to come to get involved in research? Absolutely, we are, uh, we are open for business. <laughs> I appreciate you, Dr. Baker. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you want to see some UCA questions as well? <laughs> um, all right, I, I appreciate it. Thank you.